SNL legend Dana Carvey and actor comedian David Spade slammed Dr. Fauci in a joke on COVID-19. Let's watch. I miss COVID. <laughs> I know. Dude, you know what I knew? There was trouble <laughs> when anyone that came to our country didn't have to get a vaccine. And I go, mm -hmm. if you're telling me I can't go to work, but everyone, everyone coming in doesn't have to get one, I go, well, once we found out, when Fauci said, okay, I'm sorry, but if you've had two boosters and two vaccines, you can get and give COVID to another guy who's had five vaccines and four boosters. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between a vaccine and a booster? I don't know, it's just more vaccine, but booster sounds better. Anyway, a guy with 25 vaccines would get and give COVID to another guy with 25 <laughs> vaccines. That's why I'm introducing the daily COVID shot. Every day you get a shot. <laughs> By the time you get to your car, you got no immunity. But it's a beautiful 39 seconds. <laughs> now, Comedy legal again. <laughs> now, I'm a little confused Amazing. about this, Robbie, because my understanding was that there was a vaccine requirement for yeah, uh, so international what, travelers. What David Spade said there wasn't exactly true. But maybe he was referring to um, I, maybe like the illegal immigrants coming in or something. I don't know if that's what he was referencing. It, it, people, uh, so America. So, the um, American citizens coming back, returning to the country, didn't have to get vaccinated. Mm -hmm. But if you were not an American citizen and you're trying to enter the country legally, you could not do so unless you were vaccinated. Um, and in fact, that policy still in place today. No, I thought it <laughs> ended earlier this year. On May 12th, they got rid of it. Okay, they just yeah. got rid of it. Because um, this, in fact, this uh, primarily we learned about it from impacting. Um, uh, international um, sports people right. who are not vaccinated. Novak Djokovic, one of them, uh, wanted to uh, compete here and couldn't out of this totally ridiculous idea that it was a requirement, but it was not. There was no public health rationale behind it because, as Dana Carvey points out, you can be vaccinated and contract COVID and spread COVID, and it's not. It's not impacting the spread. Um, it might right. be a good decision for your health, particularly if you're at an, in an at-risk category, but it is not a stopping the spread kind of thing. Right. There was, was the some evidence that the first round of vaccines did have a better Fine. preventative effect on the first, on the then round of yeah. COVID, but that effect. But I thought that was funny deal. that he had there, him, him being allowed to joke, permitted again <laughs> to do comedy. <laughs> Well, I do think it's interesting that I don't think I've ever heard anyone do a Fauci vocal impression before. And then when Dana Carvey did it, it did, I was reflecting on the fact that, yeah, he does Dana have Carvey a specific way of talking and accent. Impression. I don't even think that was his best impression by a mile. His impression of um, George H.W. Bush was so good. Right. But the point I'm making is just that if we had a different kind of comedy atmosphere, is that is the fact mm -hmm. that I've never heard a Fauci impersonation evidence of kind of him being as a, a touchable um, right. factor in in these uh, in, in this uh, I mean, media sure, environment I'm, on I'm SNL? I'm sure and SNL like has that. done skits with a Fauci, and I don't watch enough SNL to know I feel like who I was their seen Fauci. It. I don't. I, I watched it. I don't know. Maybe 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 not. But it, you know, I, I'm curious to see what the public reaction to that will be if people still feel like we're in a sensitive enough situation that even joking about it is beyond the pale, so, or if this is reflective of the fact that people have norm, normalized or better. Yeah, forward. on social media, all I'm seeing is mostly is conservatives or independent, you know, anti-Fauci type people saying this is great, this is hilarious, loving on this. I'm not seeing, you know, Dr. Peter Hotez <laughs> in there saying, oh, this is very dangerous because it will inspire vaccine skepticism, but maybe he just hasn't logged on yet. Um, so this that's the kind of reaction I would have expected at another time. Did this happen on uh uh, Spade's podcast? This is on, or I believe, on a podcast that they have together. Although, I have become wary of, because I'll see like little TikToks or I, more so on or Instagram reels or wherever they show up mm -hmm. of what looks like comedians talking in podcast format. And what I have learned mm -hmm. is that they're fake mm -hmm. and that comedians do this. They make it look like they have a podcast and they have a nice little mic stand, mm -hmm. but it, there's no underlying podcast. This is their way of just creating content. It mm -hmm. looks like a podcast, I guess, because younger people, Gen Z, will only consume things, uh, even millennials too, maybe, uh, uh, that are in podcast format. So you got to trick them into thinking it's a podcast. This is a whole phenomenon now. Yeah, it's I've wild. heard about that. There are a lot of um, these dating conversations where yes, the same to yes. topic gets regurgitated over yeah. and over again. And they'll get a panel of, depending on the politics of the show, you'll get a panel of young, hot, but ostensibly stupid women, ostensibly, I'm not saying they're stupid, but that's how yeah. it's supposed to be framed, 
being asked questions about who they'll date and how much money they right. expect men to have, that it's supposed to generate anger. Look at this hot, dumb woman oh. saying she wants a man to earn six figures. And then the host of the show, a man, will own her for being stupid. And I've learned a lot of those are not actually podcasts either. I think it's some of those are maybe designed to promote like OnlyFans as well or something like that. I don't know. Um, you mentioned that you watch TikToks on Instagram. I do the same. It's because we're older. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I feel detached from all of this in the same it's way. A lot, I've seen I, a lot of these with this um, this Matt Reif guy. Do you know who this no. is? Matt Reif? No. He's a very, he's a hugely popular, I guess, on TikTok um, comedian that like massively, massively popular, billions of views. Huh. And uh, there's a lot of these kinds of, and I mean, he does stand, he actually does stand up. A lot of his clips are from his stand up shows, but he's also in conversation with these other dudes talking about dude stuff, sometimes with girls, sometimes just about girls, sometimes about girls with girls. Should we get some microphones? And maybe a we're actually of doing a we're doing women. a show. We're doing an actual show. Oh, yeah. It would be like if this was no, fake. Before, and there was no rising to watch, and you're just seeing clips of it. The, before the for the for the 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 TikTokification of it. Oh. Do people? Is it the microphone it's the that people are responding it's to? The microphone. That's what I'm yeah, saying. we don't have we have a more professional setup. We have. Yeah, but maybe we should get some clipped to us by our expert <laughs> uh, staff. We should get some performative, like the big vintagey looking, like 1940s. Yeah. Microphones and then maybe oh, like, we can do like TikTok the World data. War II broadcasting, kind yeah, of like like a like a radio show, like a yeah. transatlantic yeah. accent. The Nazis <laughs> are marching across Europe as our forces are. <laughs> exactly. I mean, hopefully different content, but yes, well, yeah. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Women are they as stupid as you think they are? Well, that content hasn't changed. Unfortunately, okay. we're a uh, uh, far far cry from what we started out with. Uh, okay, apparently our. Producers are telling us it's from a real podcast with the two com the two comedians called Fly on the Wall. So check that out if you want more excellent impressions from Dana Carvey, someone I loved from back in the '90s from his SNL heyday. Yeah, I know that he's very popular. David People Spade love too. His, um... uh, Just Shoot Me. That was another. We were talking about like sitcom type things that you watched that were always on. It was I a watched different time. a lot of those. David Spade's comedy career is, I think, not something that would be permissible today, for was better or for really worse. PC? Cancel culture. I mean, it was just a very different type, much more um, machismo, for lack of a better word, mm. um, culture that a lot of that stuff was written in. I don't know. It was a very, very different time. Joe Dirt, remember that? Loved that movie. Yeah, I don't know how that would read the class implications of that today. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Uh, but they are certainly uh, comedians that are famous now because they, they have, they've earned it. And they're both very funny. They're funny in that clip. Mm. And I appreciate that people have ongoing concerns about COVID. But it was Joe Biden that declared it no longer an emergency. And they did some of the, a lot of those emergency um, housing and health care uh, interventions that were helpful to people. So if people are angry about the dialogue that's happening on this podcast, I think the anger is a little misfocused. It should go to the people mm. with the power and authority to actually have interventions that are beneficial to the American public at mm. large. Well, we are having fun here today because we're not really here. We're actually at the pool. <laughs> and also here. How do we do it? More Rising right after this.